So if you've watched a lot of YouTube and followed marketing and you've received a lot of marketing, I don't know, you might have you might have been given the impression that processes with lots of cores, workstations with lots of cores, thread rippers and extreme processes and chunky Xeons, are great for computer-aided design. That's that's what they're there for, right? Because computer-aided design is clever. It's tricky. It's a computer-aiding design. It's what the computer's there for. If What's it for if it's not to aid the design? What's all those cores for if it's not to, to churn away the power and make all that CAD stuff, right? It's clever. We don't know what they're doing, but it looks clever, and that's what the cores are for. It not, not necessarily the case, right? You know, this is where the audience is going to kind of get split into two camps, right? There's going to be one half that'll go, mate, it's kind of common knowledge, all of this, like, surely everyone knows it. And then the other half will be like, I, I didn't know that. I did not know that. So I, I, I know... It, it, this isn't news, but now that we've got Invmark, we can see this in numbers. We can see this in actual fact, and that's what I want to do in this video. This was part of a, a bigger video that I was doing to recap on what we've learned since Invmark release, but an hour into it, I was like, this is too long. I need to break this up. Uh, so we're going to start with looking at a, a Threadripper 3990X 64-core processor upload to the Invmark leaderboard. Uh, and this is fascinating on a number of levels. It, it's it's not just one thing. It's lots of lots of fascinating things in here. And I want to break it down and talk about it and just point out uh, a few things. So I'm not p picking on Buck in particular, but I want to thank Buck for uploading this system. Uh, I'm pretty sure when Buck uploaded this, he wasn't expecting much. Uh, so Buck is the owner of Bimbox USA. There is a boutique system builder in the USA. Buck's actually sending me over one of his striker units, which are more suitable for Autodesk and 3D CAD. Uh, anything for this industry. This, I don't even think, is a full, fully built system. It looks like one of his, yeah, it hasn't even got his OEM information in it. So this is just a, a test box by the looks of it. He's probably just running it through curiosity, but uh, not expecting much from it. Uh, he's got his striker units, and his striker unit did hit first place on the leaderboard, which was extraordinarily impressive. Uh, it's just, Buck, you've just been pipped to second place now. So you need to get on that, mate. Uh, but yeah, this one is the 3990X. It's a 64-core processor. At this point, the world's most powerful kind of consumer-grade multi-core processor at this point, before you get into the realms of like proper hardcore chunky server-grade Xeons and Epic processors from AMD. So what's interesting about this, uh, it's coming at 67th on the leaderboard, which is uh, not average, but it's not far away from being very middle of the road. It's 20,000 points away from the first place. So it scored 35,000. First place on the leaderboard is 55,000. But what's even more interesting is the CPU with the most cores. <laughs> Bear in mind, most leaderboard entries have six cores. Eight, 10, 12. This is 64. And it's just 8944 in the multi-core score. The highest is 10,000. What's happened there? You know, why why wouldn't the, the CPU with the most cores in the world get the highest multi-core score? So again, splits the audience in two. Half of them would be like, well, I know why. Other half would be like, yeah, tell me why. You know, so that's, that's what this video is for. So scrolling down the list, you'll see that this system did blitz the ray tracing test. So the ray tracing test in Autodesk Inventor is the only module in Inventor that is completely parallelized. It's the only test that'll take a workload and put the CPU at 100% throughout the duration of that test or that workflow. And... Clearly, the Threadripper is it's the top scoring uh, workstation on the leaderboard for that. Uh, the rest of them, not so much. So what I've done for when I was designing this test is I referenced Autodesk's own support for multi-core processors page, which advises users on which areas of Autodesk Inventor leverage multi-core processors. As pages out of date, there are likely other areas of Inventor now that leverage multi-core uh, operations, but... Uh, I thought this was a good place to start. Uh, there's only so many tests I can do anyway, and given that this page is quite old, I figured that, if anything, these because these modules have been in the software for quite a while and leveraging multi-core processing for quite a while, there's a good chance they'll have been iterated on and improved over the years, so uh, this was a good place uh, to base the tests on. So drawing views, so we've got a drawing test, and our drawing test is basically exactly what this describes. It's creating compu or computing precise views and then calculating the precise, precise views using background updates. That is the entirety of our drawing test. And you can see the Threadripper was not great at it. That's worse than my 10 core i9 10900K. My 10900K got 1300 points on the drawing test. Then we've got graphics. All view related commands 
use multi-core processing on the CPU. Graphics is low. And we've got import workflows, importing any non-inventor CAD file. Our data translation test is importing a step file, average. Uh, and then the other two that they've got mentioned here, which is uh, modeling workflows, we've got the solid sweep execution. It was pretty good at that. So it did do quite well at that particular test. And then simplification and task scheduler. I stopped there. Right, enough's enough, right? I can only do so many tests before the test's too long. Let's talk about this. Why did the Threadripper do terrible at drawings? Terrible is in in context, right? In context would be in 64 cores. If this was a Dell XPS laptop, right, that would be quite a good score. It's ter it's efficient, but it's terrible because it's from a 64 core Threadripper, right? It's perspective. And then the data translation test, why was it so bad at that? Well, it all boils down to Amdahl's law. So Amdahl's law is often used in parallel, well, you can read it, but I'll read it for you. The text is probably quite small. Uh, it's used in parallel computing to predict the theoretical speed up when using multiple processors. For example, if a program needs 20 hours to complete using a single thread, but one hour portion of the program cannot be parallelized, therefore only the remaining 19 hours of execution time can be parallelized then regardless of how many threads are devoted to a parallelized execution of this program, the minimum execution time cannot be less than one hour. Hence, the theoretical speed of is limited to at most 20 times the single thread performance. I don't know who wrote that. It's very developer -y speak. It's basically the way I've interpreted that to mean when you've got an operation in computer programming and it isn't 100%, they call it parallel, parallelized, we can call it multi-cored, or multi-threaded, right? So if you've got an operation which is not 100% multi-threaded and parts of it are single-threaded, well then you're at, the, you're at the mercy of that CPU's single-threaded capabilities. It's instructions per clock. And that's what we're seeing here. So the drawing test, for example, sure, Autodesk are saying the drawing views, it's it's a multi-threaded operation, but there are there are aspects to that, te that, to that part of Inventor that is still single-threaded. So when you're creating drawn views and you're calculating drawn views, there's still yes, the CPU is still leveraging single-threaded workflows in between that. So the Threadripper, yeah, the parts of that that are multi-threaded, it's doing great at it, but it's being pegged back by the Threadripper's quite average single-threaded performance, which is just average. The bulk of my modeling test is the solid sweep operation. It's calculating a uh, an emboss on a cylindrical face, then patterning and emboss. The parts that are single threaded, then they're not that extensive, right? You know, creating sketches and doing extrusions and very simple workflows. The, the biggest parts of my modeling test are intentionally the, the solid sweep. And it's done quite well at that, but it's it's still pegged back a little bit by the single threaded workflows. Uh, assemblies, patterns, the general assembly workflows, the majority of those in Inventor are single threaded. So you can see it's just getting pegged back by the single core speeds and graphics and yeah, the data translation. Even though that is labeled as a multi-core operation, it must just be so minor. It must just be so, so it must just be such a small part of that workflow at the back end of Inventor. We don't know what part of the code leverages multi-threaded, whether it's just a small burst at the end, whether it's the translation of the parts, we don't know, but all I'm doing there is I'm importing a step file and converting it to a native inventor file. No more, no less. Uh, and it's a 77 part file. So it's not, it's not massive, but it's not small either. So the, all of my tests really do give the workstation the opportunity to get its teeth into something. Things don't happen so fast that, you know, you don't, you don't give the workstation a chance to spin up and really... Uh, stretch its legs. Whatever happens in this translation test that's multi-threaded, we give it time to do what it needs to do. It's just pegged back by that Amdahl's law. So, yeah, there you go. That's that was. I just thought it was quite interesting. See, the, the 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 most powerful workstation in terms of cores didn't hit the hero score on the multi-core test. And in fact, I think the highest scoring system on multi-core is something like a. It's a 5800X. I don't even think it's a 5950X. Ah, there's so much fascinating information on this on this leaderboard. And the the good thing about it is Invmark is such a... I'm tooting my own horn here, but it's such a well-designed test because each and every module really gives the workstation a chance 
to stretch its legs. That's what it was all about. That was my intent. Don't make tests that happen in a rover within the space of two or three seconds because you don't give a workstation the chance to fire up, heat up, and require cooling. And it's not re- it's not reflective of real world scenarios, you know. So all of my tests really do stretch the workstation and give it a chance to um to separate the good ones from the bad ones because of that extended period of testing. This one just landed today, DG twenty four oh five. 11th gen, mate, again, if you watch a lot of YouTube, you'll have seen all the videos saying how bad 11th gen is. First spot, second spot, 11900Ks. And this one is, somebody's forgot to imply the XMP profiles, 2133 megahertz. Can you imagine if he puts his XMP profile on him, how much higher that's going to go, potentially. I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to getting an 11900K. Uh, said in my VR video, I am not on anyone's A-list when it comes to getting CPUs to test, so I'm just going to have to... I'm not going to buy them. I'm, I, I, I can't. I'll bankrupt myself. To continuously buying hardware just to make videos with. Uh, maybe I'll get one at some point. So there you go. That's the Threadripper coming in with a pretty, pretty average score on balance. Because generally, yeah, these workflows, although they are multi-threaded, they're still at the mercy of single-threaded operations. And that will be the same with other CAD applications. Not them all, not, they're not all created equally, but I think you'll find that that's pretty consistent across a fair few of them. But there you go. Thanks very much for watching. That's the Threadripper. And maybe you learned something, maybe you didn't. If you did, hit the like button. Get subscribed if you're not already. There is a wealth of information like this on the leaderboard. Just every day, little n- g- gems, little nuggets come in like that. And I'd just, I'd love to do a little video like this when I see them pop up. Uh, I might just do that. So thanks very much. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.